twist after twist after twist. That's my synopsis of Subject 360's story. It opens traditionally enough. The main character is locked in an escape room by a little girl with a creepy voice, forced to figure out puzzles or die trying. Then things get... weird. I won't reveal exactly how, because this game deserves to be experienced without foreknowledge of all of its surprises. But suffice to say that the player is thrown into an increasingly bizarre series of situations, and it quickly becomes difficult to tell what's real and what's just fantasy. But what about the hidden object criteria? A truly mixed bag this time. Players will visit a series of fantastical locations, including a dilapidated town, an alternate version thereof, and a series of bizarre dreamscapes. Some of the game's clutteredness is earned. Ransacked offices and storage areas should be filmed with randomly strewn objects after all. A lot of it isn't, however, and the game suffers from some truly shoddy translation. I'm used to hidden object games having slightly questionable English. They're generally made in Central and Eastern Europe, after all. But rare is the game where a translation is so completely wrong that it makes an item very difficult to find. That happened multiple times in this game. It's a split decision, leaning more towards yes than no. There are plenty of 12-1 screens along with the integrated ones, but enough of those are mosaic scenes that the developers get away with including them. There are a number of extremely clever integrated scenes as well, in addition to some well-built storytelling sequences that ride the line between puzzle and a hidden object game. There's a great sequence where the player has to click on pieces of furniture to stack them into a makeshift ladder. It's extremely clever, and a perfect example of the developer's admirable willingness to experiment with design. Fantastically. This is a true standout when it comes to hidden object game narratives. It has a fantastic villain, who's both extremely creepily voiced and incredibly well designed. Although, to delve into that one too far risks those huge spoilers I'm trying to avoid, there's around two and a half hours of gameplay here, and that's without ever forcing the player to return to a hidden object scene more than once. Subject 360 is constantly unlocking new locations and posing new challenges for the player, keeping the pacing brisk and thrilling. A warning, though. This is one of the scarier hidden object games I've encountered. There are a bunch of well-designed jump scares and a truly stressful boss fight, so be warned. Things get pretty dark in this one, and it's not for the faint of heart. We need to get to the ancient native burial ground under this house, but there's no convenient basement. However will we get there? Bulldozer! Absolutely yes. In addition to offering a full hour of extra gameplay along with the standard art and music assets, the game story is wonderfully enriched by offering the second look at the action from a new perspective. It ambitiously covers what was going on before the game started, some side content happening around the main adventure, and even a little bit of the aftermath. This is one of the best bonus chapters I've ever encountered. There's even a special extra hidden object scene that allows players to clean up a monstrously cluttered bathroom. When I played Adam Wolf nearly a year ago, I was amazed at the developer's success in elevating the hidden object puzzle adventure into a complete interactive story with television-style structure and pacing. For some reason, this didn't lead me to immediately track down other games from Madhead, the developers. Obviously, this was a mistake if May's Subject 360 is indicative of the kind of work they've been doing. It's engrossing and frightening in equal measure, and I look forward to playing the rest of the games in the series as soon as possible. After that, well, what other games have Madhead made? This review is based on the copy of the game purchased with my own money. If you'd like to watch the playthrough which led to this review, swing by the Hidden Object Guru YouTube channel. See you back here for the next review, but until then, au revoir.